right, what is going on, guys? I am going to play some video game. What should I play? I've been... I got some new games that I've been messing with. I was playing this one last time. Man, that game's a trip. I don't like that narrator guy. All I'm focused on in this one is finding him and killing him. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Um, so, yeah. I saw a lot of people rate the game highly, saying that it's a work of art, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. I agree. It is special. It is different. It is interesting. But it is also fucking annoying and boring. I'm sorry. I can't just totally dick ride this game. Um, the narrator is actively antagonistic towards you in the most, like, libbed out cock way, you know? Like, yeah, you, you ever... Like, you're, okay, you ever have a day where you get up, you're in a good mood, and you want to go do something, and everyone around you is like, poo-poo face, no, I don't feel like, <laughs> That's how the narrator feels to me. <laughs> he's, he's that negative Nancy motherfucker, you know? And it's kind of annoying, because he's like that through the whole fucking game. This guy's personality is just condescending and, like, filled with self-hate. And is trying to like over please, but at the same time is very dismissive. Like that dude has some fucking issues. <laughs> but yeah, it's a trippy game. It plays with your fucking mind big time. Like that's interesting about the game. Uh, yeah, it's a very meta fourth wally kind of game. But it, it's not like fun. It's just interesting. You know what I mean? It's not fun. I'm not shooting things or blowing stuff up or or clearing challenges or obstacles. No, it's just decide to do this, a thing happens. Decide to do that, a thing happens. This has a reaction, that has a reaction. Do this over here. Every time you play it, something new is is on the horizon. Um, so it's interesting. It's just it's just weird and random and crazy. Whoever made this game is fucking insane. But I like it okay. But I don't I don't I don't know how to rate it. I don't know how to give it a score, you know? Like, I play games like Halo where you shoot alien scum. <laughs> yeah. Halo 1, I'd give it basically a 10. Halo 2, basically a 10. Halo 3, basically a 10. Uh, Reach and ODST uh, kind of felt lacking in a few areas, so maybe about a 9. I used to feel differently, but I changed my mind. You change your mind how you feel about games, you know? I used to think Reach was the best Halo, but I don't know, going back, I don't know. I think Halo 3 and ODST are actually my favorites, at least right now. And for a time, I thought Halo 1 was the best thing ever. And uh, Halo 2, uh, of course, during its golden age, during its online play, I thought that was the best thing ever. But looking back, uh, they could have done that game better. <laughs> you know, so you, you feel differently as time goes on. But you can still pretty much rate them, especially when you compare them to so many other shooters to each other. You can kind of rate stuff, you know, when there's so many games that are like that. What's like this, though? What What is like this fucking game? I haven't played many that are quite like it, and I'm pretty sure not many games exist out there that are like this one, so... Yeah. But I do think everybody should play this game, regardless of if it's your thing or not. It's not my thing, but it's interesting, it's weird, it makes you think. It's a cool enough game, and it's cheap as shit. It's only some dumbass indie type game that's like, what, like, $5, 10 $20 tops, depending on when you get it or where you find it. So, yeah. And I got this game. They had it on sale. Rise of the Triad. You guys ever play this? This is an old school shooter called Rise of the Triad. I guess it's against fighting Nazis. You get MP40s or something. But I think it's like an evil Nazi cult that is trying to rise up, and you have to go in as a special ops team and take them out. And it's a cool game. The uh, It's old school. It's like from Doom, Wolfenstein, Quake, you know, like early 90s shooter. Uh, yeah. Um, boomer shooter. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I like it. It's not bad. And for like five or ten bucks, yeah, get it, dude. Fuck it. 
I also got this for dirt cheap, uh, Turok 3. I got the other Turoks on here, so I figured why not. They got Turok 3 re redone. Uh, the character's eyes look fucking weird in the remaster. I don't know. That shit was creeping me out. I was showing my buddy Justin, and he was watching. He was like, I don't know about this, man. <laughs> but, yeah, um... I like it, though. I forgot about this game. I didn't play it very much. I didn't like it as much as the other Turoks back in the day. And I think I got this game right at the time that I was going through some weird shit in my life. So I really didn't put as much effort into it. And I, I also remember Rage Wars coming out similar time frame. Uh, and I love that game. I wish they would remake that on PS4. But... I don't know. We'll see. But I wish they would do it, because Rage Wars is the best Turok experience, if you ask me. It's just, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's discount um, Unreal Tournament, basically, uh, Turok Rage Wars. But it had its own kind of uh, appeal, you know what I mean? And there was a weapon combo that I just fucking abused to hell and back in that game, which was, like... You, this ice gun that freezes the shit out of them, and then you switch to this other gun and finish them off. It was great. This game kicks ass. And, it, uh, yeah. I dug it. So if they could remaster that for me, that would be nice. Because playing it on the old N64 these days kind of sucks. The controls aren't the greatest. The visuals and frame rate are crap for shooters on, on N64. Um, it would be nice to have it updated. That's all. I got this one, Like a Dragon Yakuza, and I heard it's a decent game, it's wacky, it's crazy, but I got it for like 10 bucks, so fuck it. Persona, I never played the original Personas, the older ones, and they put those on here, so I grabbed those. I heard Persona 3, 4, and 5 are just great, so I'll play those at some point. Like, I'm not a big fan of the RPG elements in these games, the turn-based combat kind of shit. I don't, I don't get it. I don't care for it very much. Never been a big fan of those kind of games. But a lot of games with turn-based RPG-type combat, like Final Fantasy and stuff, they're some of the best games ever made, even if it's not your thing. They are some of the best games ever made. The music is like, come on, Yamatsu created the music. That guy's like the most talented video game composer of all time. Hands down, like, it's a clear victor. <laughs> like he doesn't have competition and, he, and who's the second best guy in the world at making video game music jeremy soul the rapist uh <laughs> uh who else marty o'donnell the 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 guy who's always getting into legal bullshit <laughs> um let's see who else koji kondo yeah that guy's probably the second best he makes all the mario and zelda music and shit yeah uh david wise Donkey Kong, fucking uh, Battletoads, hell yeah, dude. A personal favorite of mine who's not very up there on the list is Mr. Kaplaki or whatever his name is. I can't say his name. The guy who did all the Westwood Command and Conquer fucking music. That guy's badass, dude. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, uh, the, mm, um, I can't think. Uh, oh, of course. How could I leave her out? She did Street Fighter 2 and Super Mario RPG. What's it? I can't say her name. Yoshimura or whatever. She's the best. Best woman to ever make video game music. She's great. So, yeah. That's my sum up of video game music artists. Uh, let's see. Man, I got so many games. Quake 2 on here. Nice. Should I uninstall anything? Do I have something that sucks that I need to make room for? All this stuff is pretty badass. I try to get no microtransaction games. And all the best indies and all the best uh, AAA exclusive types, you know. Although, is, is anything exclusive anymore? I swear, I really don't feel like it is. I saw the dumbest fucking argument online. Oh my god. The fanboy types really need to drop it, dude. Back in the day, there was kind of a reason to fanboy it up. Yeah, my console's better than your console, yeah. Because, you know, they were very different back in the day. They were. They were very fucking different. You would have these 
very, very, um, you would have a lot of fucking games that are only playable on the Xbox console, and then you'd have a lot of fucking games that are only playable on the Sony console, you know? But nowadays, uh, everything's like on PC, uh, multi-platform crossovers happen like crazy. If a game comes out on one console, it, and only that console, it tends to only stay that way for a few months, and it eventually gets a version on PC or, or somewhere else. Like, that keeps happening now. So... It kind of doesn't matter what console you have. It kind of doesn't matter. Like, I'm looking at PS5 and Xbox One, and I'm just like, eh, it's kind of all the same shit to me. Versus when I looked at the PS3 and the 360, and I was like, oh yeah, 360 is the way to go. Duh. Um, I eventually did get a PS3 just because uh, I got um, the old school PS3 model that can run PS2 games. And that does a really good job with certain PS2 games, so I kind of wanted it just for that. And uh, it also has the PS3 online library, which is great. You can get a lot of discounted old-school PS1 games that you can't find anymore that are really expensive if you buy the physical disc uh, on eBay and shit. So they had a lot of great deals there, and they play and run great. Uh, hmm. And, uh, yeah, I... Uh, of course, Demon Souls, you can't play that anywhere else except on PS3, unless you get a PS5 and get the remastered version. But I haven't even fucking gotten past the first, like, hour or so of Demon Souls on PS3. I figured I should fucking beat it on the original before I even play the remake, remaster thing on PS5. And uh, I'd have to get a PS5 for that, and I don't know, man. Like I said in my one of my last videos, I don't I don't think getting a PS5 is all that worth it right now. Haven't wowed me that much. They've kind of disappointed me, honestly. So I don't think I'll be getting a PS5. And they say they're gonna release like a PS5 Pro model later this year or maybe next year. Yeah, I think I can still wait on that. I don't feel too excited about that. Yeah, these dumb movie games, I never should have got them. I, I, I really don't care for these. These are fucking stupid. And they take up so much space. Look how much space they take up. Where is it? Yeah, 55 gigs. You fucking kidding me? This is Elden Ring right here. This is Elden Ring's memory. Fuck. Yeah, if I delete those stupid three movie game things, then that would be great. These movie game type things, man, they're not my thing, man. I, I wish people wouldn't be so, like, hard on them, you know? Games are supposed to be the Like, okay, take it easy, take it easy, you're going too far. Games can be whatever the fuck they want to be, dude, all right? It's just, you know, you prefer what you prefer, that's all. I don't prefer this stuff. I, I really wish gamers would take ratings less seriously, they... They always want to put, this is the best game ever, and this is the worst game. Like, dude, dude, everybody has their own skills and weaknesses. Every game's the same way, you know. Unless it's like a total cheap piece of shit, clearly made to, to you know, uh, destroy people's wallets. But <laughs> those ones are pretty obvious. Let's get real. Like the newest Call of Duty, for example. Yeah, some games are seriously evil and there is one of them right there that i just mentioned but um like uh even games that are kind of like bare bones or kind of cheap and stupid or whatever and sometimes you can find something in it that you really enjoy you know look at this dumb game right here postal redux this game's terrible and it, the premise is awful you're a mass shooter basically uh, <laughs> you do get to kill police though and i love that so <laughs> i hold this game dear to my heart in at least one regard. Um, Stranger's Wrath. Yeah, I really don't like this game very much, but there are a few aspects of it that I like. Um, Doom 2. Yeah, uh, to me it's just uh, more Doom 1, but it's alright. I don't know, man. Got all these crazy games. But yeah, it was fucking dumb. These uh, assholes were fanboying it up. They were talking about Forspoken... And Hi-Fi Rush. And this is what was so fucking stupid about this conversation. 
everybody was clowning on Forspoken and praising Hi-Fi Rush. And the fanboys were just like, yeah, Xbox got to win in your face, Sony. Because apparently Forspoken got panned by critics to a degree, and it didn't sell very well, and the users really didn't like the game very much. And uh, Hi-Fi Rush is apparently praised by anybody who's played it, uh, for the most part. So, uh, you know, they were all praising that game over Forspoken, and I haven't played both of them, and I don't really care for both of them. They don't look like my thing. But uh, from the look of it, yeah, it looks like Hi-Fi Rush is the better game. Here's the thing, though. Uh, here's the thing, though. Why are you idiots saying that Sony took an L and Xbox took a win when... In reality, you can get Hi-Fi Rush on PC, and you can get Forspoken on PC. Where's the console war, dickhead? It's multi-platform. I can't only experience Forspoken on a PS5, and I can't only experience Hi-Fi Rush on an Xbox Series X, okay? It's multi-platform. This is dumb. <laughs> Stop fanboy. The console warring it up. It's fucking stupid as shit. Doesn't make any sense. Pretty much everything goes to PC nowadays, right? <laughs> yeah, PC gaming is kind of the best way to play. Especially because, uh, man, there's a cat yelling. There's a cat yelling. Yelling cat. <laughs> Hello, yelling kitty. How are you, Smelly? Are you pregnant, Smelly? I think my cat's pregnant, I'm not sure. Hi, Smelly. <coughs> Hi, Smelly. You want to sit in my lap while I talk about stupid games? Hey, come here, you. <laughs> come here, baby. Aw, what a sweetie you are. Yes, you are. You're hungry, huh? You want me to get you food? Your ears are really cold. You were outside, I could tell. You're all fuzzy. <laughs> you precious little baby. This cat loves me. It was funny. Last night I was trying to do shit on the computer and she was bugging me. So I was like, oh man, you're annoying. I'm going to get you out of here. So I picked her up, took her into my brother's room, laid down, chilled with her for a bit, and then I fucking passed out. <laughs> and I woke up at like four in the morning like, what the fuck? Hey, are you? What are you doing, you silly cat? I love you too, Smelly. Careful, don't cause trouble. Hey, leave me alone. I'm trying to do a video talking about dumb fucking video game shit. Yeah, but uh, it was sad though because like... Uh, here's the part where I sound like a console war fanboy, but I'm trying not to be, okay? I'm just being realistic. Sony is kicking that Xbox ass, okay? It's just true. The PS5 has sold, outsold the Xbox Series X by twofold or something like that at this point. It's just true. It's just true. Sorry, Xbox, but you've been pissing off people way too much. I don't think this is necessarily a, ooh, they have the better games. It's like, no, nah, that's very subjective and opinion-based, you know? Like I just fucking said. The way you feel about games changes all the time, you know? There can be games that you liked and now you hate. There can be games that you hated at first, but now you, you've you come around. You know? Happens all the time. I hated the Souls games when I first played them. Now I love that shit. Hey, hey, no. <laughs> this cat is being silly. You are being silly. Yes, you are. Give me a hug, you. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you go lay down so I can not be distracted by how fuzzy you are, you fuzzy buddy. What are you? Are you going behind me now? Really? You're going to lay down behind me? Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, what was I fucking saying? Uh, um, so, uh, the, the Xbox community has been starving for good exclusives. Something that they once had with Halo games, Gears of War games, Fable games. Like, at the time when those came out, you could only really get them on console, on the Xbox console. It was just a fact. Shit wasn't popping off on PC, and it wasn't on the other consoles. So this was, like, a unique thing you could only get on those consoles. So that was the draw. You bought an Xbox to play that stuff, you know? 
And uh, a lot of people, especially like me at the time, couldn't afford a badass gaming PC and weren't really into that kind of thing anyway. PC gaming at the time was best for like Half-Life and Counter-Strike strategy games. You know, it didn't blow up to what it is today where a PC can be a console, like literally, like because of Steam and all these advanced AI features we have now with computers. Fucking PC gaming is very user-friendly now. Like, for example, I just played Resident Evil 5 on PC. And I was like, oh, how do they do the split screen? How is that implemented? Do I have to, like, set up another profile? How does that even work? I'll tell you how it works. You plug in a second controller and start pushing buttons. Second player is joined. That's how it works. It's fucking very simple. <laughs> it is very intuitive. Very, very good. And this cat is sitting on my armchair just being my good buddy. Yes, you are. <laughs> Look at you. You're just a loyal, happy buddy. <laughs> Smelly, we love you. Yes, we do, Smelly. Really? You're going to sit on the armchair like that? Be my good friend? And just hang out here while I say dumb things about dumb people? <laughs> You're so cute and precious. This is the best cat ever. She's like the perfect house, house cat. Um, her brother, the boy, is a monstrous savage. Uh, that cat is... I've never seen a cat quite like that. He, uh, I got these cats when... I got three of them when they were kittens growing up. One of them ran off and disappeared, unfortunately. Something bad happened. But these two stuck around. Good old Smelly and her brother, the boy who grew up into this gigantic beast of a cat who fights all the other cats in the neighborhood viciously. Like, I think he murders them. It's fucked up. He's gotten serious injuries before, but he's healed like nobody's business. Like, he's just a strong fucking cat. Anyway, he disappeared for a whole fucking week last week. And he showed up, just like, Hi, how's it going? Like, nothing ever happened. He goes on these wacky adventures. I think he's got other people in the neighborhood who take care of him and shit. He's just a savage. But he eats a lot. He's a big boy. He'll eat a little when you feed him. He'll leave, come right back in like five minutes, eat more. Leave, come back in like five minutes, eat more. Like he, he does that. He'll do that like five or six times and then he'll be gone for good for the rest of the day usually. Maybe he'll come back tomorrow. He's strange. But he's a big funny guy. And... Me and my brother raised him, so he looks at us like we're his parents. And he he uh, he mostly does his own thing. He has no sense of humor. You can't just, like, pet him and pick him up and be like, Oh, you're so cute. Look at you. No, he gets mad. If you do that, he starts grunting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that. It's weird. <laughs> like, sounds like an angry raccoon trapped in a cage, you know? Like, that guy's, uh, I love that guy. <laughs> But he's been injured real badly. He's disappeared for days. He got lost in that horrible blizzard we had in 2021, it was, I think. Early 2021, I think that's when that happened. Yeah. Insanity. And in freezing temperatures for about two days, he still survived and came out here. And it's fine. I guess he had enough energy that he didn't, like, his core temperature freeze himself. To the, I don't know. Mammals, man. Especially young, strong, tough tough guy kitties. They are uh, pretty resilient, actually. Okay, she got tired of sitting on my chair arm, and now she's sleeping in my bed where I sleep. That's my spot, dude. You're such a sweet, sweet little kitty. Yes, you are. You are the cutest cat. I love you, Smelly. Anyways... What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, these dumb gamers. Yeah, fanboying it up. My point that I was making is the Xbox community, by and large, is clearly starved for good exclusives, a thing that they haven't been getting very many of. And because, honestly, Game Pass and PC are hurting uh, the console's uh, ability to stay alive. It's just true. And I don't mean to say that like it's a bad thing. There's many good things about the version of PC existing, and uh, ga game, uh, game Pass. Game Pass is great for people who don't have ma m very much money. Like, it kind of sucks that 
it exists the way it does, they can literally take away your the game that you're playing whenever they feel like it. That's what that's why Game Pass sucks. You don't actually own any of the fucking games. So that's why it sucks. But if you're a demoer, if you really don't want to spend money but try a bunch of shit, yeah, sure, it's great for that. But I grew up in the demo era uh, in my early 20s and late teens, so I already got a feel for what games are like. I, uh, Not to sound too arrogant, but a lot of the time I can see a game and go, oh, I know what that's going to be like. And once I actually play it, yeah, this totally met exactly what I thought it would be. And... I kind of never had to play it in the first place. A lot of games are just discount versions of better games, you know? So <laughs> you start to learn that eventually after playing so many games. Like, I played this new game uh, called, like, uh, uh, what was it called? It's made by those Apogee guys. It's a very uh, serious Sam uh, kind of experience. It was all right. A lot of people loved it a lot, but I wasn't feeling it. I got it for like 15 bucks on uh, Steam, and then I asked for a refund. Well, I wasn't feeling it, because, uh, you know, what what shooting game beats the Bungie Halos? Like, you gotta come real close to that, dog, if you want my money. Like, that's how fucking picky and high-end I am. Like, the new Doom, Doom 2016, those new Doom games, I fucking hate them. I don't like them. I don't think they play great. I don't think the am aiming mechanics are very precise sort of generic slog run around smash everything not much skill required and it was a glitchy experience like it was a very samey experience so many parts of the game are trapped in a room with assholes kill all assholes then you can move on so much of the game is that it reminded me of destiny fuck that game uh and then the enemies would glitch out they wouldn't like do proper behavior and you can't progress unless you find them all in the area and some of them are glitched and stuck on walls or whatever. That was trash. But worst of all was the ending. Oh my God, the ending pissed me off so much in Doom 2016. Did my version of the game have... Was it broken or something? Because it was bad, dude. And I was playing this for the first time in like 2020, 2021, something like that. That was my first experience with this. So they had plenty of time to patch and update the game in case it was broken at launch. No excuses, dog. I played the end of fucking Doom 2016, where the evil scientist lady turns into the brain monster thing, the spider brain that you gotta fight, and it's this big epic battle. There's not enough ammo in on your person to defeat this boss. You would literally have to destroy projectiles and stuff in the in the boss arena and that spawns new ammo and you grab that new ammo and use it against the boss this is literally how you're supposed to defeat the boss guess what happened in my first fight a glitch no ammo was generating there was literally no fucking ammo during the boss fight i got wasted because i didn't have a way to fight duh restart <clears throat> all of a sudden ammo is dropping yay good finally thank you I beat the boss's ass, and then there's this epic moment at the end of the game. It's so cool. You stick the BFG in her fucking mouth and pull the trigger and blow her fucking brains out. It's the most hardcore shit ever. Whoever thought of doing this as the ending, good job. Here's the problem. The animation that says, oh yeah, go ahead. Now it's time to press a button and stick that F uh, BFG in her fucking mouth. There was no button prompt. Another glitch had happened. I couldn't do a button prompt to engage in the kill. The, the kill the final boss. Nah, nothing. Restart for a third fucking time, and then it finally worked. You see how this experience just fucking killed it for me? And I already wasn't liking the game that much. I heard people like Sean Skull and H-Bomber guy say, Oh, this game's great, blah, blah, blah. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry, you two. Uh, suck a dick. You guys are wrong. The game's not that fucking great. Where's the split screen, bitch? Every fucking shooting game should have fucking split screen. Dude, dude. Even this motherfucking remastered whatever game, Turok 3 from back in the day, has split screen. Are you fucking kidding me? That this can do it, but you can't. This is bullshit, dude. Us gamers are getting fucked.
all our shooter franchises are devolving into online only, unfinished, low content, cut content, like split screen, you're fucking us over there. Like, oh, man, lame as fuck. And then for the second game, apparently the first one had a map generator thing. Like, I, I don't like the game very much, so I don't give a shit. So I didn't even mess with that part of the game very much. But uh, the second game doesn't even have that feature. It's like, oh, great, less content, thanks. <laughs> what are y'all fucking doing? What the fuck are you doing? Oh, yeah, the stuff that our game is great for and what people know it for and love it for. Yeah, we're just going to not do that anymore. Thanks. Okay. Fuck you, dude. It's like when 343 makes a Halo game. Hey, you know how your Halo games play like Halo games? Well, we're going to start making them feel more like cock duty How do you like that? It's like, you're never getting my money ever again. <laughs> and, and that's just scratching the surface. I don't even get me started with the online only, the microtransactions, the fucking unfinished nature of all their games. The cutting of content, like split screen. Yeah, man. Don't even... Like, I've gone off on these motherfuckers before. I don't feel like it right now. There's a freeze coming in a few minutes. I gotta get my shit together, go outside, and do all this garden stuff. Because everything's gonna die out there. This freeze is gonna be bad. It's gonna last two to three days here in Texas. Uh, 17 fucking degrees, dude. That is freezing as fuck. That is bad. That's not 20s, that's not 30s, that's, we're below 20, dude. <laughs> wow, that's unheard of around here, it's super rare. I've lived in Texas for about 30 years of my life now, and I've only seen this kind of coldness come like once a decade. Like literally, I think I've seen it maybe three times. I've only seen frost and snow like, yeah, I've only seen snow twice, yeah. And, uh... The other third time that it froze real bad, there was no snow, but there was a lot of rain and everything got covered in a sheet of ice. Like, the road was an ice skating rink. The fucking trees there had a skin of ice shield over them, and you could, like, hit it with a hammer and shatter all the ice off the side of the tree. It was nuts. Yeah, but uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to be nuts. But, you know, I grow all this stuff in the garden for the tortoises, and it's nice and green and lush, and it keeps growing and growing, and it's free food for the tortoises. It's better than the stuff at the grocery store. It's cheaper than the stuff at the grocery store. I love it. I love doing it. It's good exercise. Everybody should garden and stuff. Like, that's what, that's what you should be doing, honestly, as a human being, is fucking farm work. Like, that's what you were kind of born to do, to keep your... Your, li your little in-group of society going in life. But no, we decided to become capitalists and turn the world into a concrete jungle shopping mall of stupidity, right? We all could be living rich lives where we just run around doing whatever we want. But no, we're restricted to some stupid bullshit, you know? A world where pigs can do whatever they want. Billionaires can do whatever they want. But you? You're a slave. You're a sheep. Just like me. If, if we die, no one gives a fuck. It's just true. This world sucks. Capitalism blows. If it was a more commie environment, people would get taken care of better. People would get looked after better. People would have more free time to do as they please. Luffy from One Piece is right. Being a pirate is the way to go. Being a marine sucks ass. Marines are capitalists. Marines are dumbasses. <laughs> it's just true. And Luffy's a fucking idiot. And even he knows this. Come on. Ridiculous. Just goes to show you how stupid, uh, you know, the capitalists, the right-wingers are, the libs are, you know. Ugh, what a joke. But anyway, guys, um, man, oh man, should I play a game? I gotta get going here in a sec. <laughs> Pedro, yeah, I was playing this. Pedro game. This one's weird. It's made by those Devolver guys, which are honestly hit or miss. Mostly miss, I'd say. But their games are fucking dirt cheap and fucking stupid, so... There's like a talking banana.
Eight levels, huh? Okay. Oh, there's a bunch of levels, actually. All right. Yeah, this, this game's uh, weird. <coughs> the controls are very strange. But it's cool, you can hold down like the left trigger and freeze your aiming in that direction and then you can, while holding down left trigger, you can use your other hand to shoot. The music, I don't know about it. <laughs> but it's a very flowing game, you know? It's all about popping off walls and doing trick shots, and there's Max Payne style, like, slow down, you know? you have to jab down on L3 to engage in the slow-mo because you want to turn that shit on fast whenever you feel like it, you know? And jabbing down, that doesn't feel fast to me. Honestly, I've always hated important mechanics being relegated to jabbing down on, on, on L3. I... Mm-mm. Nope. That's not good controller scheme, if you ask me. Never make jabbing down on the analog something that you have to do, like, all the time on left, uh, on, on, uh, L3. No. Make it crouch, I guess. <clears throat> That's fine. Uh, make it, um, a menu thing, I guess, maybe. Like a power-up ability or something like that. Something you rarely use, you know? That's better. Because you'll wear out your analog stick or your, your thumb will get fucked up. Anything like that can happen. Over time. Jabbing down left uh, analog stick, nah, I don't, I don't go in for that. I really don't like Call of Duty for that reason. They want you to engage and sprint by jabbing down on that thing. It's destroyed many of analogs and made plenty of money for the gaming industry as a result. From people breaking their controllers and paying for replacements. Like, not cool, dude. <sighs> <clears throat> not cool. And then bumpers on controllers have been notoriously shit over the years. I think they're getting better, though, so that's good. But yeah, using the bumper a lot, that, that bothers me, too. I don't think bumpers should be as uh, frequently used. What I really love is uh, these controllers, the Series 2 Elite controllers with their back paddles, their little paddles on the back. I love that shit, dude. The back paddles work really good. I've only messed with used, shitty, fucked up controllers that have had issues with the uh, back paddles. Yeah, that sucked. But every brand new one that I've gotten plays very nicely to this day. And just so you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's right, 10 Series 2 Elite controllers, some of which I got as gifts for my friends, uh, all play good. Yeah, about 10 of them. And I did get three used, one of which I returned because it was so bad. Those were bad. Yeah, they had some problems. The Series 2 Elite controller does have some stock issues, unfortunately. 
a lot of the time the A button won't register as good. It feels like you have to push down extra hard to make sure it works. I don't know what the fuck they did there. They fucked up. But a way to fix that problem, thankfully, is tent tape. Cut out slivers of tent tape and line them on the inside of the uh, controller uh, buttonhole. And then put, it, put, the face pipe, put the face plate back on. And now the A button is going to be pushed down in a more straight manner instead of wobbly. That was the problem. And now it'll register a lot better. It's not going to fix the problem 100%, unfortunately. Make sure you're pushing the button firmly. But it will help dr dramatically. Drastically. Dr oh my god, I can't speak. I'm, I'm, I need to wake up. I need, I need coffee or something. <laughs> oh, sleepy smelly. You're so cute. But yeah, guys. Uh, yep, I need to start the day. I got Sea of Stars on PC, the RPG game. I wasn't going to get it because I heard from a lot of people, it's good, but it's not quite as good as Chrono Trigger. And I was just like, so why would I want to play the discounted uh, Chrono Trigger, right? Fuck that then. Pass. So I was about to walk away from the game completely. But then I heard the original composer for the music for Chrono Trigger returned to do 10 tracks on the game. So I was like, fuck it. We should honor that man. He is amazing. And I'm one of those musicians who can't, like, you know, can't, can't, uh, I gotta give it up to the guy, you know? A lot of respect there. So, I think people should give the game a chance. You got him back? Okay. I kind of felt the same way about Super Mario RPG. I was like, yeah, I'll probably still like the original more than the remake, but whatever. Let's give it a shot. Just because they brought her back and she's doing the music and... She's great, so let's do it. And I don't regret it, but I did walk away saying, ultimately, as fun as this was, as great as Super Mario RPG Remake was, still like the original more, sorry. Ooh. And anyway, guys. Um, so I had to get it, and it's good. I like it a lot, actually. Um, maybe, call me crazy, but maybe I do like it more than, uh, Super Mario RPG, Chrono Trigger, all those classics from back in the day. Maybe I do. I don't know. I haven't played it enough yet. I played it for about an hour. Story's all right. Pretty cool. I'm digging it. Gameplay elements are top notch. Uh, one of the, uh, it seems like they're more creative and more experimental with the, uh, with the, uh, what do you call it? The timed hits in the, uh, combat, which I'm really digging. Like, uh... The lady character that I'm playing as, uh, what's her name? Star Luna Moon Moon Girl, blue hair Moon Girl. Um, I, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know the characters' names. I haven't played very long, <laughs> but she is badass. Uh, she has this like move where she throws this boomerang thing at the enemy, and it hits them right, and then it comes flying back to you, Ocarina of Time. Uh, Link versus Ganondorf style, and then you bat it back at them and hit them with it, and it comes flying back to you again, and you hit it again and again and again, and it gets faster and it gets faster and it gets harder to keep up the timing. And I'm pretty good at it. I was able to make some back and forth land like 20 or 30 times before I fucked up. And yeah, it's very interactive, very fun, very tempo beat, you know? And like, the game is cool too, because it'll tell you, even if you're not very good at the timing, don't, don't, like, take, don't take it so seriously. Like, it's just an added bonus in combat. It doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna lose or die if, if you're not good at it. You know what I mean? Uh, 90% of the gameplay is your decision making. 10% uh, is your timing, your skill. You know what I mean? So, um, not a very skill-based game, but it's an adventure. It's an RPG. It's not meant to be about how good you are at, at killing things, you know, like, a game like Halo is for that, you know, to see how skilled you are as a monster of war on the battlefield, you know, and apparently I can be pretty nasty, but, uh, RPG games, nah, they're more just for fun, for kicking back, my favorite RPGs are the ones you can play with your friends, you know, like Diablo, well, not the newer Diablo, unfortunately, I refuse to get an online-only microtransaction game that has been panned by so many people. Like, it's not just the online-only microtransaction stuff, you know? 
I know there's a lot of gamers out there who think I'm a fucking asshole and they want me to shut the fuck up about this and think it's not a big deal that it's online only and has microtransactions. I know there's gamers out there like that. My best friend Jake is one of them. He doesn't care. He buys Call of Duty and crap like that. I think it's fucking stupid. Me and him will never fucking agree on that shit. I, I, will, I will, for the end of time, laugh at him and say, you're a dumb fuck. <laughs> for buying these stupid fucking games, dude. But, um, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, it's not just that, though. It's not just the corporate bullshit. It's the game itself kind of fucking sucks. Like, <laughs> like they've been doing updates and adding content, and the end game replay value element to Diablo 4 is dog shit, apparently. And then they did some updates and some big new changes, and... Those were underwhelming, apparently. Like, a lot of people are just dogging on the game, dude. So, <clears throat> I am glad to see it got no awards from the Game Awards, as it rightfully, as, as that rightfully should be. And same thing with Hogfarts Legacy. That game wasn't very good. It's just a discount open world, let's take everything from other games kind of thing and, and see what it is, and... It, it, it's on par with like like the Mad Max uh, open world game, you know. It's like uh, it's okay, I guess, but it's definitely passable. <laughs> and honestly, you never should have had anything to do with it in the first place. It's kind of a transphobe game, you know. Just saying. And it's also kind of racist towards Jews, you know. Look at these. Look at these banker goblins with big noses, and they run the banks. Yeah, we're not making fun of Jews at all. I'm like, fuck you, game. I don't know, man. Yeah, uh, that's what's fucked up about that J.K. Rowling cunt. Like, you're a little kid, you see the wizard storybook thing that she's doing. Oh, yay, a cute little wizard story. It's for kids. I'll check it out. Yay. You're a derpy fucking little nerdy dumbass kid. You get involved in that shit. Start reading it. Yeah, there's like a dragon. And, and yay, there, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're a dumb fucking kid. You grow up watching shit like this. You know, and that's your entertainment. And then you become an adult and you finally reach the age of reason. And you learn that all of that she's created is from her bigoted, racist, sexist, horrible fucking mindset you know it's just true she has an asian character named cho chang ching chong ching like oh dude that is fucking racist man and before any of you get on my ass for being racist just now i am asian suck a dick <laughs> there's a black character um shackle ford shackle you know black people slaves yeah fuck you lady <laughs> You know, fuck you, dude. We know you're a monster. That's the reality. So how do you feel about the content now that the creator is a piece of shit, you know? Uh, there's Lord of the Rings, the creator there. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Tolkien? He was a piece of shit, too. He was also a racist. What do you think the orcs are? They're a bunch of dark-skinned Turks that he hated so much during his time. Yeah. And, of course, uh, the good people are all light-skinned, right? And all that, uh-huh, sure. The hobbits, you know. The, he, he was kind of a commie, too, though, actually. He was a racist commie, <laughs> essentially, because he was all about uh, the decent white people who kept to themselves and didn't fuck up the world like every other asshole in Lord of the Rings. No, the hobbits are the good ones. They just, they just live on the land and be happy, and they're clearly the most morally superior people. Yeah, you know, and they're white, and they're British dudes, you know. So, yeah, the guy was a racist, but uh, he's dead now, and now they got the new Lord of the Rings show, and it's awesome, and th it's not fucking just painting uh, the orcs as mindless villains to kill who don't have any character. No, they're actually people now, and they kind of have a complicated backstory, and it's more deep, you know. So the new Lord of the Rings show is fucking doing a good job. They're taking his flaws and correcting them and making the franchise better. And that's what I want to fucking see happen to dumbass Harry Potter. That franchise is a joke. How about 
one day this cunt dies and isn't in charge of the rights to the franchise anymore, and then we can get some decent writers in there who actually uh, do a decent job with that dumb franchise. Maybe that could happen. That would be interesting. It would definitely be better than what we got now. All right, I'm done talking. I got to get going. I'll see you guys later.